Okay, so the next little section, and I realize we've only got 20 minutes, so I will wriggle on, is about collaborating um, with other researchers. Um, finding potential collaborators at QUT, Australia, worldwide, and considering tools for um, data sharing and collaboration. So collaboration is really um, important. Uh, there have been studies done which show that there's a direct correlation between the number of authors and the impact factor of success of an article. Uh, when you have collaborators, you might have um, a greater chance of being able to join someone else on their successful grant if you are not on a grant of your own. Um, it might be easier to obtain funding with collaboration. You're expanding your network. So one, f oh, this is an interesting point as well. One fifth of the world's scientific papers are co-authored internationally. So it's a very um, common practice. So we're going to have a look at um, how to find some potential collaborators. So one way to do this is in a way it's about selling yourself, making sure the world can see the work that you have done. So there are multiple ways to do this. You could create a profile. You could create a Google Scholar profile. You could make sure that you have an ORC ID. We'll go into this um, tomorrow. Um, you can make sure that your articles are available in digital repositories like our ePrints. Um, you can make sure you join professional associations, you go to conferences, host webinars and so on and get published and ranked. So all ways that you can get yourself um, visible out there in the world of research. Now I'm just going to go into Google Scholar briefly. Okay, so I just wanted to go into my Google Scholar profile. Um, but I don't want to show you mine because it's not that interesting. I want to go into Google Scholar and show you the profile of one of our successful um, researchers here at QUT in um, the creative industries faculty. So he has a Google Scholar profile which makes him much more visible out there in the world of research. It also allows him to see how he is doing, how his publications, how his research is being used out there. He can see his total numbers of citations, his citations by year. Um, he can see which the um, more successful of his publications are um, and so on and so forth. Things like this can be useful sometimes when people are thinking about where to go to to focus their research when they see which of their articles is um, are being used um, more. Uh, so that can be quite um, a handy thing. Okay, so we'll take a couple of minutes, five minutes to create a Google Scholar profile. If you already have one, have a look at QUT staff profiles or QUT ePrints to see if you can identify potential collaborators at QUT. Ah, okay everyone, um, I'll call you back now. I've just noticed um, some chat going on about uh, Google Scholar profiles needing you to have been published first before you can make um, a profile. So that looks like um, that's uh, a new thing. Um, anyway, I hope that uh, if you didn't go there, you were able to possibly look at ePrints or um, QUT staff profiles. And if you didn't, um, I do encourage you to go and have a look to see if you can find who's working in areas that would interest you um, at QUT. So networking is really important. You know, it's not, um, we don't live in a world where people sit in their garret working by themselves anymore. It's, um, there's a lot of useful, interesting work being done through collaboration, um, bouncing of ideas, and that's where the opportunities are. So the first port of call as um, a PhD student, as an HDR, is your supervisor. 
I mean, it sounds obvious, but they are your mentor. They're your guide to success beyond your degree. Um, they should encourage you to present your research, first of all, in faculty seminars to, um, to practice to test the waters, to meet the other researchers in your field who are nearby, um, but then to go on to attend meetings and conferences um, outside of QUT. Uh, your peers, um, you've been interacting with them here and already having some interesting conversations. Uh, that's the best way. That's a great way of having um, bouncing ideas and, and solving problems is to um, work with your peers. I know there's all kinds of social media sites going on at the moment with HDRs. I think the Yammer site is going strong. Um, this is a good, good, good way to um, share information. There's faculty events. Uh, I know IBI has uh, IBI Inspires little conference. So that's another good place to um, go to. And they'll have professional events with outside speakers as well. Uh, conferences are really important for you to build up to um, to attend, but also to present at and if you're not a speaker, present a poster. Um, that's where you'll start to get known as a player in your field of research. Some of you may be working in areas which are um, fairly immediately relevant to professions and practice and being members of professional organizations may um, be a good way to work and facilitate your networking and some of you also may be working in industry so you might have supervisors who've got um, useful industry contacts um, and then you have these so social media tools like LinkedIn, Twitter and so on and so forth. Uh, I know a lot of researchers kind of build their Twitter followings from the conferences they attend and then start to build um, really wonderful networks that way and they use it to promote their publications and new work and find new collaborators. So um, we are going to look at um, finding a conference now. Um, I just want to say a couple of things about conferences. There are a lot well, not a lot. There are occasionally conferences that um, emerge which are not bona fide conferences, which are predatory, which are fake conferences. So you need to be really careful when you select a conference to attend. Um, your supervisor, who I mentioned before, is the obvious place to go to for advice about what the best conferences for you to attend and present at at any given stage um, of your PhD. And, you know, they will know the big players in your area. Um, so we have this tool called Conference Alerts, which um, when I stop talking, I will encourage you to go in and have a look at. And it allows you to search for conferences in given areas. But they're not always that good at checking how good or bona fide a conference is. So we have this other tool think, check, attend, which is really worth looking at and using to make sure that any conference you are thinking about is bona fide. I'll just click on the link and um, show you what it covers. So it has a conference checker here on the right hand side. with a series of questions to make you think about the conference that you think you might like to attend and hopefully steer you away from making any bad choices. Because it may seem funny, but some people have been caught out in a city they don't know attending a conference that wasn't actually a real conference. So questions like, are you aware of the society organizing the conference? Can you easily identify the venue? Are there any sponsors involved? And so on and so forth. So now I will give you five minutes to have a little explore of conference alerts, but then also if you find a nice conference, just check it through, think, check and attend. I'll call you back everyone. 
So I will be seeing you um, tomorrow in the S4 workshop. Um, where we will be looking at uh, how to decide where to publish, what the best um, journals are, what the best fit might be for your research. Uh, we'll look at using bibliometric and altmetric tools to measure the quality and impact of research outputs. And we'll also look at some of the training that we have available here at QUT for your post PhD um, career. So that's it for S3. Thank you.